نكمل قصة أمس لعبة جميلة الصراحة جازت لي طيب وانا الحين نروح في اخضر طلع لك الاشياء <laughs> no more. Not tonight. Not like this. I will not take another life. كل ما طلعت كل ما جاني الصوت I found a wounded man by the docks. He answers to the name of Clay Cox. He requires urgent medical attention. Already making the rounds? That's the Pembroke spirit. I'll ask our porter Milton to bring him back immediately. Thank you, nurse. Abzalakum <laughs> insisted we provide you a quiet office. You'll find it on the second floor with your name on the door. Thank you. Nurse Crane, isn't it? Yes, Dorothy Crane. Welcome to Pembroke Hospital, Dr. Reed. Your office has been prepared. 
I would like to ask a few questions first. And Mr. Hampton, the patient we brought in, how does he fare? I gave him a sedative to help him sleep. Poor thing was in quite a state of shock. What kind of man is Dr. Swansea? Well, you accepted the job from him. I thought you would have known about your employer. Doesn't matter. We have to understand him. Uh, well, we just met him, you know, that's it. It's right to assume Dr. Swansea knows far more about me than I do about him. You'll get to know him soon enough, and better than me. The administrator has better things to do than mix with us. Apologies, I've only just met him the once. This is sudden. I've only just returned to England. Dr. Swansea is a brilliant surgeon and the most compassionate physician. If you could point me in the direction of my room again, nurse. Second floor of the hospital, left after the stairs. It's the last vacant office at the end of the corridor. Bant. Thank you, Nurse Crane. There. Dr. Swansea is right. This place seems perfect to conduct my research. Well, look at these all of these at Atlanta. Doctor, I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, Doctor. How would you describe the situation at Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. Mm, the Spanish flu lasts forever. Definitely. You must get a hold of yourself, nurse. <sighs> Sorry, I'm exhausted. No one has any idea when this epidemic will be over. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? I will help you. In the end, nobody was spared. How long have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. You'd be surprised what dedication can achieve, Nurse Hawkins. In medicine, sometimes we're just a test result away from a miracle. Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter. But I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual. Especially concerning doctors. Why is Milton? <laughs> is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. Why does Milton dislike doctors? Oh, I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned, Milton is not the chatty type. I'm a vampire. I can do whatever I want. I can also say it now. And I'm lost. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Thus, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland, Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. 
Nah, kita tahu. Dah selesai selesai. Oh. Please can you tell me something about yourself. I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. Mm-hmm. Tell me about your experiments. What made you show them? I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me, but I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test, a test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve this situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. You're not smiling now. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh, no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Hmm. Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father, ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. This that guy is a murderer. Could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior, a man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? 
All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes, and fears. Awesome. A biological machine comprised of blood, bones, and flesh. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. What can I do for you, Doctor? Thank you, Nurse. Thank Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Ackroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swanson's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. Oh, sir. Tell me, Waverly, what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patient's lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Piddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. Why do you wish to leave this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. If you are going to leave this surgery, I am trusting you to assume the consequences of your actions, whatever the result. I'm not the kind of man who runs away from his responsibilities, Dr. Reed. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Ackroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't believe we've never met before. But I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. Aren't you too old for such savage? It really won't do you any good, you know. Don't be ridiculous, Dr. Reed. A simple glance is enough for me to know you have nothing for me to envy. Boom. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea. But over time, his enthusiasm has become misplaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money, fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. 
But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Aykroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. I have saved many lives, knowledge has helped me more often, no reason to justify my actions either. What's up for shame, Akhtar, or I'm from that other Mughrur? What of no reason? I don't see any reason why I should justify my actions to you. That's true, Dr. Reed. The only judge has to be yourself. The question is, are you judging yourself hard enough? It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Ackroyd. Bye. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. It's definitely away from prying eyes. Relegated to the shadows. A kingdom of my own. At least I won't be sleeping in a coffin. It's the knock and bogat job, I'm sure. I'm going to show you the next one. I'm going to show you the next one. طيب هكا انا نايز طيب ما عندي اسويش William Bishop's blood is much more unstable than human blood and shows extensive mutation. But this is not what happened to me. I must keep on searching. The sun is about to rise. I can feel it. I'll continue tomorrow night. I have so much time. The flower's dying. It needs water. Needs water. I'm going to go to the abilities. I'm going to go to the abilities. Let's go from here, maybe? Yes, from here. Okay, I'll have to increase your health, increase your stamina. Okay. Ah. 
Gerade auch in Marokko jetzt. Wenn man so hin und her geht. Weil wir nur durch Tag das brauchen. Ich hoffe, du hast deine Taktik. Na, hat. Gera, gera, gera. Und du hast nicht zu schiffen, wenn du schiffst, dann. Wenn ich hier bleiben muss, bis meine Recherche fertig ist, dann sollte ich besser lernen, meine wahre Natur von den Mortals zu verhindern. Aber was ist mein Thirst für Blut? Yes, Nurse Crane? How can I help you? I'm so sorry. I know Dr. Swansea wanted you to rest, but we have somewhat of a crisis. A crisis, you say? Our supply of antiseptics is nearly oh, depleted. I was hoping there was another box up here, but... I'm going to show you what I'm Sorry, there's nothing here. Some of the patients won't last the night without them. Honestly, sir, I'm beside myself. I may have a solution. In France, during the war, drugs shortage was a daily problem, and we had to use our wits to overcome the shortages. However do you mean? If combined correctly, certain household chemical products can be used in a pinch instead. Now, where's the hospital storeroom? The storeroom? By chance. This is the Pembroke, and space is luxury we don't have. Everything used to be stored in the old morgue. Perhaps I should look there first. Where is this morgue? It's the large building behind the hospital. You'll need to go in the back door because it's been sealed off for sanitary reasons. Take this key. It opens a small back entrance at the end of a narrow street. The abandoned morgue behind the hospital. A small door at the end of a narrow street. On my way then. Thank you, nurse. It's an ambush, dude. Be careful. Oh, yeah, that's it. I cannot enter. Good evening, Mr. Hampton. How do you feel? Dr. Reed, is it? Oh, sir, I must apologize for my behavior. What do you mean? I was not myself in the factory. Fear and exhaustion made me say awful things to you on the flint. You remained perfectly nice and polite. A little delirious, perhaps. But who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? Thank you, Doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. What is the general situation in the East End docks? The situation has always been tough, with a lot of business and the Dockers Trade Union. The wet bill boys are very nervous since they lost their leader. Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife Edwina who runs the show, with the assistance of her minion, Hugh Digby. Has the gang been threatening you? Ah, no. I've had this nickname for so long. You know, the sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint. 
not even criminals. How did you end up in William Bishop's den? I had received alarming news about his recent behavior. I went to his place, and he refused to let me go. You dared to enter this awful place alone. You're a hero, Mr. Hampton. Or a fool. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. Yeah, I'm a afflicted soul, searching for life. Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't know why. Just like a patient I met here. This Miss Hawcroft. Do you know Tom Watts? The bartender from the Turtle. I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption... Okay. People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. No drugs, no advice, nothing. It's a damn shame. Who should I avoid in this part of town then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. What do you do for a living, Mr. Hampton? I can't help you. I manage a night asylum for the poor and homeless of the docks. And I tried to guide the lost and hesitant. Are you a priest, Mr. Hampton? A deacon, maybe? Not at all, Doctor. I'm just a man of faith willing to preach the good word. Why didn't you use your cross? To investigate. Cross is no magical token. Have you made friends since you arrived? Not really, but I reckon. But then I reckon they get shot. Okay. When you hear when she lived by the docks, that poor woman had such a miserable life. You never came to see her here at Pembroke. Receiving visits when sick can be an important part of the healing process, you know. We're not just bodies. إن شاء الله بس كل ويكند أيام الأسبوع ما يمدي. How do you feel, Mr. Hampton? Medically speaking, I mean. I feel exhausted. Beyond exhaustion, actually. William drank so much of my blood in his madness. I feel empty. You're in good hands here. Dr. Swansea is well versed in blood transfusion, and I'm sure he'll take the best care of you. Thank you, sir. I believe all I need is rest, and then I can go back to the people who need me. That's a lot of Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. Mike, the chef in a shake. Another mission. Allah's happy on the mission. عشان نساعد الأخ عشان يعطينا هنس بعدين نرجع هنا
قفل الباب للاسف يبغى لنا طريق ثاني نستغل الموبايل فاير وضعت النار Marcus. Yes, hello. عليكم السلام اهلا مقرور هنا بس ماني بعرف وين طيب وانا مفروض الحين اروح مفروض انه هنا بس ما في ما في شيء Opium is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Hassan. 
Never a good move. And I should go look to what happened. Okay. And a hush. Hello? I'm so busy, right? And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? I located the shop, but it was vandalized, and the owner is missing. All I found was your order. I was afraid of such bad news. People are so desperate they're ready to burgle a shop for drugs. That's quite a list you ordered. Opium, sodium hypochlorite. It can't be just headaches you're trying to cure. It's dreadful influenza, of course. I already ran some tests on hopeless cases. And that's how it's on the guide. Do you realize you can't do vampires without the correct dosage? Then there are the legal ramifications. Is this not true of any medical substance, Dr. Reed? However, if you would agree to improve it, I'd be glad to accept your help. As long as you promise to be scrupulous with your experiments, I may try to gather these substances and even help improve upon the mixture. That's all I'm asking for, Dr. Reed. That's all I'm asking. I want to know about these secret tests you run and if they can save people from this epidemic. Speak to me now, Thoreau. I know I may sound presumptuous, but I'm just following your steps, Dr. Reed. I'm casting away the shadows of ignorance by daring to face them. Self-confidence is essential in our line of work, my young colleague, but only if tempered with the correct amount of cynicism. But you never doubt yourself, Dr. Reed. I've read all your articles and books. You performed the most daring research during the war. طيب نزبد له ذا ولا شو نقول له؟ شو ذا يسبورت هم؟ Don't you think we have enough work already? Perhaps now is not the best time to be chasing shadows. Chasing shadows? Really? It's funny those words coming from the only doctor here who has spent more time outside this hospital than in. Us. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I can't let Strickland... <laughs> ...with opium. Perhaps an adjusted form. deliver more of a placebo effect. I have a rough on the submission. Voices in the garden. I should investigate. If they were to find somebody, 
لازم يعقدونه ما يخلونها سهل في أكثر من مكان أروح له بيطلع لي شيء كذا يبدأ قتال رهيب الحين Fortifiers, <laughs> as popular as they are ineffective, but they do contain iron tartrate and prove itself useful. <laughs> Mr. Connor's injuries don't match the report. I'd better look into this. It's locked. It's locked, all right. I'm not sure for that, Salah.
God, please. I can defeat them without becoming stronger. To drink. I like and go and go. كويس أعطانا قد أمانت في XP عشان نسوي أبجريد I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon. Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. Your loving dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon. What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency. Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal. Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? 
hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome, Miss Hutton? Never. It's a discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Ugh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whatever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? No, I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me. For I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. Who are you really, Miss Hammer? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. That was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's mind, you see? I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark. Finally, you've returned, Doctor. Did you find anything of value? Yes, nurse. You've worked your first miracle, Doctor. Now, this patient here needs immediate treatment. Duty calls. When the storm has passed, I'll show you how to mix the remedy yourself with the same basic ingredients. Many thanks, Doctor. When you've finished, you ought to report to Dr. Swansea in his office. He's been looking for you. Seemed pressing. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> the, you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating.
be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea, but my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. Okay, we shall not die here. I'm a dead man. I was murdered. Now I'm a murderer. Tell me how this. Shall I solve? Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. I'm not some doe-eyed student, Edgar. I understand we both have something to gain from this relationship. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out, a spokesman or politician is what you need. Can you still help her, Sandra? And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Also, dann gehen wir für den Stream. Leon, inshallah, alle next weekend, am Mittwoch, am Freitag.